Chasing Latitude. Ladies and gentlemen, right before we jump into this, head on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I will send you my new ebook 100% free. Today, we continue the process on my journey back to the water, and I'm bringing you along to show you exactly how I go about buying a new to me, fancy dancy used sailboat. Now, if you have not seen the previous video where I list out all of my criteria, I will link it down below and I will wind up putting them in a playlist just for you. But to cover some very basic criteria, I am looking for a vessel no more than $100,000. A vessel no more than 20 years old and a vessel that is under 40 feet in length. Now I will be financing a large portion of this vessel, hence the need to keep it under $100,000. And I always go for a vessel that is 20 years old or newer as I am not looking to bite right into a major refit on any vessel. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am super, super pumped about this vessel and I need you to hear me out first before you start tearing me apart in the comments. There is a very, very specific reason as to why I absolutely love this vessel and I really want to know what you think by the time I'm done trying to justify this. Now, my biggest issue when it comes to sailboat shopping is I got champagne taste on a beer budget and it's cramping my style more than you could ever Ever imagine. So today, let's talk about the Hans 315. Now this is an incredibly small vessel, but I absolutely love it. And for long-term running costs, this bad boy can be solo sailed for next to nothing full time. Now, as I mentioned, she is pretty small. She only comes in with a length at the waterline of 28.54 feet. She has a very, very small length overall of 31.56 feet. Now, based on those two numbers, she's not going to be breaking any speed records here. She has a pretty small beam as well of only 10.99 feet. She does come with two different drafts. You can go with the shoal draft or the deep draft. And the deep draft option only comes in at 6.07 feet. So for me, I would go ahead and snag that deep draft option because it's right around six foot, so it'd be okay for here in the Caribbean. And I'm also gonna get some benefits due to that deeper keel. Because she is so small, she is incredibly lively at the helm. Very, very minimal wind will get this vessel up and cruising at full speed. And she's gonna be a squirrely little bugger, but I love that when it comes to sailing. So with that deeper draft, that's gonna kinda give me a bit more performance on my long-term sailing. Now, she does come with a 26 gallon fuel tank. I've mentioned this before, I prefer right around 50. So I'm gonna need to carry some jerry cans occasionally for those longer trips if needed. She also comes in with a actually a nice water tank of 61 gallons. So I could foreseeably grab this vessel and I wouldn't have to put a water maker on it right away. I could get by with that 61 gallon fuel tank for quite some time and save myself some initial money when it comes to the vessel. Now this one was first built in 2016. When you're browsing through Yacht World, you're gonna see some 315s that are prior to that, and those are a completely different model that is not this vessel. Now, let's get on to the amazing features of this vessel. Of course, we have the dual helm with a very, very nice wide swim platform. Again, perfect for me. And as we move into the interior of this vessel, this is one of the most open, bright and airy vessels that is actually on the market today. Now look at the amount of light that this interior has and check out how many windows we're working with here. She also has these three enormous coach roof hatches. So again, airflow down here in the Caribbean, boom, we've got it covered on this vessel. There is so much exterior light on the interior of this vessel, it will make it feel much, much larger. And when it comes to Hans, as far as boat manufacturing goes, they are one of the best when it comes to making the most use of the space available on board. Now, we also have our phenomenal L-shaped galley. It's nothing to write home about. You're not gonna be cooking Michelin-starred meals here, but 
It is more than enough for me. And keep in mind, I'm just a solo sailor, maybe a girlfriend someday down the road, but right now it's just me. So inside it has everything that I need. I'm more than capable of throwing up a lee cloth and sleeping right there in the saloon on passages if needed. She has a pretty small chart table, which I would probably just launch in the first place because who needs a chart table these days? I sure don't. But if I did, I would just use the table in the saloon. Now, if we go forward on the vessel, we have very, very similar to the Oceanus 38.1, or no, the Oceanus 38 and the Oceanus 35 open forward V-berth. Now that's an option on this vessel, so it's not on them all, but you can get it where it is completely open and the V-berth itself can actually transform. There is some extenders there that will create that entire forward berth into one V-berth. Or you can remove the extenders and you add an additional seating compartment right there. There's a little table that folds down and some other benefits here in the V-berth. It's pretty phenomenal as far as use of space goes. Now, if we move back, we have a very, very large head on board. But again, we're running into some downfalls here as it's not a separate shower. It is a wet head and I hate wet heads, but hey, champagne taste on a beer budget is only gonna get me so far, so I gotta be realistic here. So I'm gonna have to work with that, possibly. But we're not done with the amazing features just yet. Now, if we go back to the stern of the vessel, this aft cockpit is enormous. Now for me, I would just launch it and turn it into 100% storage. I would create some shelves back there for more provisions on board, sales, and possibly computer office recording studio or something like that, as this aft berth is incredibly roomy. Now for some people, it will work for a second cabin, but for me, I don't need it, so it's gonna get the boot. Now, as far as solo sail ability on this vessel, you can get it in a wide variety of sail plans on board. And Hans actually has what I believe they call the easy sailing plan or something like that. Anyway, basically there's a couple extra winches. You can run everything right back to the helms. Easy cheesy lemon breezy. Now with a vessel this small, this cockpit is so big. It's much, much larger than a lot of 35, even 40 foot vessel cockpits, especially the single helm cockpits. So this has almost everything that I need on board in a very small economical package. And I think it may just work for me. Now the biggest bonus for this is the price. You can sometimes snag these bad boys for right around 65 or 70 grand. So now I'm coming in 30 or $35,000 under my absolute maximum budget of $100,000. There is a downfall though. She is technically only a CEB rated vessel. So that means coastal cruising, island hopping. So if I were to buy this vessel, I would be pretty limited not really limited, but I wouldn't be doing any Atlantic crossings anytime soon. Now I still could foreseeably be sailing for the next five or 10 years all throughout the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, Dominica, Cuba, Puerto Rico. I could be going all over the place here and it would cost me next to nothing to run this vessel. And in the cockpit station, there is also an additional giant storage locker that I could easily throw an AC unit, extra batteries, I could put the water maker in there, and I'd still have this completely open aft berth for any kind of other storage that I needed. So realistically, if I were to limit my sailing down here to the Caribbean, island hopping, things like that, this would be an absolutely perfect vessel. My biggest toss up here is, Am I going to be crossing the Atlantic in the next five years? Now, I'm not 100% sure on that as I've crossed the Atlantic numerous times. I've soloed it four different times. It's really, I'm not sure if it's on the table for me because I can spend so many years down here in the Caribbean. And now maybe I'm just trying to justify this more cost effective version. But in reality, I'd be perfectly happy down here sailing for the next 10 years. I'd be going all over the Caribbean, Cuba. I'd be going everywhere and I'd just be sipping my ties on the beach. Now, what do you guys think though? Do you think that I'm sacrificing far too much with this vessel based on its size and that 
inability to really cross the Atlantic. Now I could rip this bad boy across the Atlantic, but I wouldn't advise it for most people. I could do it and it wouldn't really bother me as generally speaking, most vessels, you will never push them to their absolute max. This would be that case too. But just my luck, I'd run into a banger of a storm out there. I'd sink it, wind up in my life raft for a couple of weeks, floating around the Atlantic. Not really an ideal time for me, so not 100% sure. The biggest drawbacks is that inability to cross the Atlantic. And other than that, the wet head. Those are really the only two huge drawbacks. Now, if this was a CEA rated vessel, this would be a done deal. I would absolutely pick this one up. As far as my personal size requirements, this is more than enough because Hans makes such good use of that interior space. But with that inability to cross and the wet head combined, it's kind of a toss up. But again, we're coming in way under budget here, ladies and gentlemen. We gotta keep that in mind. Champagne taste, beer budget, be realistic. It's a sad state of affairs, I know, but I am not independently wealthy by any means. Now I could put a fairly decent down payment on this vessel, finance it, have pretty small low monthly payments, and be pretty good to go in real, real short order here. That is, of course, if I could find one on the market. Right now there's one listed for 65K, and the next closest ones are a hundred and some change. So it really depends on the boat market here. But I need you to let me know in the comments, what do you think? Am I out of my mind for thinking of this vessel or what? Which way should we be going here? And if you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, head on over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com, sign yourself up for a consulting package, and I will work with you to get you on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective as well as time-efficient manner. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, share the videos, and sign up for my newsletter as I'm going to be sending out copies of my new ebook. It's 600 pages of fantastic sailing information, 100% free starting tomorrow. So sign up for the newsletter, comment down below, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I will see you on the next video.